à bas le ciel. Veganism is not just literally a way of life. Veganism is kind of what I would consider a religion. This is something that people base everything off of. Just like me, being a Christian, the Bible, and I base everything off of what the Bible says, people base their lives off of just veganism. It's I'd say like some people do, um, but probably not even most vegans. But yeah, a lot of the vegans you see on YouTube Maybe. If you claim to be vegan, everything needs to be cruelty free. You cannot eat animals, you cannot be going to zoos, you cannot have a pet. Like, veganism is beyond just, I eat vegan. It's a religion. It covers every part of your life. And also, all the comments will be disabled. I'd say, perhaps the leadership. The people that put themselves in positions of uh, leadership, particularly like in the VYC, do definitely treat it like a religion, but again I don't think that is all vegans or even most uh, everyday vegans. I don't want to have the negative comments that I had in my last video because it was beyond just people stating their opinions. It was people from the vegan community, like hardcore from the vegan community, telling me to go have an abortion. To have an abortion of my baby that I'm expecting on Christmas Day-ish is my due date. You need to go have an abortion. You need to have this done to you. I hope someone kills you. I hope someone hits you with a car. Okay, like that stuff, like... I've not actually watched her video or looked at the comments or seen who's written them, but um, I've been on YouTube for a long time and pretty much every video is going to get trolling comments and go kill yourself and people just basically saying the most outlandish shit they can think of just to be shocking and kind of what they see as funny in a trolling way, like it's not to be taken seriously everything that's written on YouTube because most of it's just shit posting. Are you serious? They live their life with their convictions and I continually live mine with my own. Being verbally abusive and swearing, it really shows your maturity, it shows your character, and I was not impressed at all. I believe in Jesus Christ. I am a Christian. That is what I believe. That is what I base so much, if not everything, of what I do on is just on the Bible, on the Word of God. If I meet a non-Christian and I just start telling them, you're going to hell, you're a sinner, you're a horrible person, why do people love you, all this stuff, I hope you die, like, are they really going to listen to me? For me, this is just how I'm living my life right now. So to I mean, that's a, a good point. Uh, it doesn't apply to most vegans, but perhaps the preachy ones could listen to this. To wrap up this part, I don't endorse inhumane animal treatments and also just really bad environmental practices that all of these factories are doing. It's not okay, but doing locally farmed meats, you're scratching out all of those things and I really feel like I'm doing it right and if I'm not doing it right, I'm doing it better. For the sheep, they stun them in the back of the head and they go, then they go down a ramp um, and as you have seen in the videos, they get their throats cut, they get hung up and they get bled out. And with the halal meat, they get stunned and they supposedly can't feel anything as they get their throat slit and hung up and bled out. And there is literally pools of blood, like sitting just out. I don't know, I don't actually know what they do with it. Um, and then when the old... Well, I mean, yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, blood in a slaughterhouse. The old ewes come through, so the really, really old sheep, it was horrendous. Like some of them had cancer, some of them actually had, still had little babies inside of them, like little, little lambs, little tiny fetus lambs that you would cut, o that cut open and they'd just be lying on the ground, like lying on the floor. I know, like, yes, what I was doing to the sheep was horrendous, but... So yeah, it sounds like uh, she was being traumatised by her work in a slaughterhouse which is understandable, but I'm quite interested in what she's saying about the fetuses because, and this is not her opinion, I've tried to find a video, I couldn't find it, but um, it's quite interesting because they're talking about fetuses here and the general attitude in a, in a sort of the, the big VYC is that abortion's okay in humans um, and that fetuses aren't sentient, so it's interesting that She's shocked by the fetuses, um, and I wonder how how vegans 
who uh, support abortion of humans would, would uh, what they think about that. But um, the cows were just, the, they, it, just, it just changed me anyway. You can literally see them like convulsing, like you can see like the, the veins in their legs and their neck and they're just like twitching and convulsing and uh, yeah, that was one thing that really, really changed me. Abat le ciel. What does it mean to say that you support the war against ISIS? if you would not be willing to pull the trigger yourself, if you would not be willing to kill on the battlefield? Um, generally in all wars, there's only a very small number of people who are at the tip of the spear, who are um, actually shooting the guns and dropping the bombs. Even in an army, I guess there's a tiny percentage that are actually out there doing the the fighting. Um, the majority of it's going to be uh, the logistics part of it. Uh, that's in any war going back, like throughout history, particularly modern warfare. Um, and on top of that, again, uh, you've got beyond that, the the nation itself supporting the war with um, with money, uh, with armaments, manufacturing. Um, the people who are working in the farms providing food which goes out, like it's, you can definitely support a war and not be fighting it with guns. What is the meaning of the word support? To support a cause, to support an idea, to support one side or another in a civil war. It's something very fundamentally different from tolerance. It's something very different from tolerating. A social problem or an unresolved question in politics. And a great deal of our discourse in the decadent West, in democratic countries like the United States and Canada, a great deal of our discourse is just about tolerance, about how we can have a tolerant society, how we can be inclusive and considerate towards transsexuals, how we can be tolerant towards gambling, towards drug addicts, towards prostitution, towards things we may personally um, have an aversion towards, we may personally morally disapprove of, we wouldn't want to be involved ourselves, and yet we know we live in a crowded society in mass where we all have to live together. And the question is, how can we tolerate one another? How can we get along? And yet there's this very different ethical and political set of questions we have to ask when we're not talking about tolerance, when we're talking about support. You don't need to be an intellectual or a philosopher to understand veganism. You don't need to be very intelligent at all to make the right decision and do the little bit you can to abstain from supporting animal exploiting industries, meat, dairy, and eggs. You don't have to be a genius to figure out that there's an ethical difference between wearing a coat that's made out of polyester and a coat that's made out of skin. It doesn't take a genius. But there are questions here that are simple. Simple, but not easy to convey, especially not to someone who's fundamentally defensive, distant, hostile, not trying to hear it. If you support the meat industry, if you give them your money, if you pay them to do this thing on your behalf, what does it mean that you would be unwilling to do it yourself? Why do you think people would be unwilling to do it themselves? Um, I would imagine most people would be willing to do it themselves if they were brought up on a farm or if they found themselves in a position where they couldn't just buy something from the supermarket and they had their own livestock and their own chickens or whatever, I think most people would surprise you uh, with their ability to do it themselves. When I say that I supported the war against ISIS, I don't just mean that I tolerated it. I don't just mean that I could have protested or I could have refused to pay my taxes, but I decided to drag my feet and tolerate it. No, I actually went and signed up to join the army. I volunteered to join that war 
And the only reason I didn't get into the Army was paperwork. It was just bureaucratic details that I couldn't get in. But otherwise, I would have gone over and, I don't know, done a tour of duty, done whatever I could. I could think of some reasons why uh, you weren't let in. To fight in the war. So I supported that war. So when I say I supported the war, I do mean that both hypothetically and actually, I would have been willing to pull the trigger. I would have been willing to watch another human being die for this cause. But you, you with your excuses for eating meat, you with your excuses for paying to support this cause, you wouldn't go to the slaughterhouse yourself. You wouldn't slit that cow's throat yourself. You wouldn't have the blood pour over your hands. You wouldn't do this. You're turning... Um... You're turning the consumption of animals for food, which is something that humans have been doing as long as long as we can look back in history. It's been a part of um, civilization, and it's been a part of tribal life. It's just been a part of being a human. You're saying that that's like a cause. I, I don't quite understand your viewpoint there. And what I've said now is a generalization. I know it's not true of everybody. I know there's a tiny minority of people who really do go to the forest and hunt their own deer. I mean, as a percentage of the tons of meat consumed per year, it's insignificant. There are people. There are people who are willing to pull the trigger. Most people are removed from their food. And it's not just... Um meat like how many people have worked on a farm how many people have grown their own crops or harvested them or uh, mend, mended fences um, plowed fields people in general are in, in civilization have like their own niche their own purpose their own little jobs and they don't work on farms I don't even know the percentage of people that work on farms it would be like 2% or something something stupid like that um, and that goes for meat is and not meat is like whether you buy meat, whether you buy vegetables. Like most people haven't grown their own vegetables, have not worked on a farm that grows crops, and most people that eat meat have not worked in the meat industry either. But the irony is, it's exactly not the people who are critics in this way of veganism who claim that they're choosing the lesser of two evils, that they're making some kind of ethical choice by eating happy meat, organic, family farmed, free range, extra expensive, extra ethically labeled meat. Those are exactly the people who would be horrified to see the reality of how these animals live and how these animals die. Um, the animals that like live in, in farms where the kind of what, what I would say is ethical farming which you probably don't even think exists um, they do live quite well uh, they live outside they're protected from predators uh, they're sheltered um, they have like reasonably good lives um, yes uh, death is going to be horrible if you see it that way um, death just is who would never participate in, the, in this act themselves no, they've never participated in this act themselves, just like most people haven't participated in harvesting fucking crop. Okay. And yet they do support it. And this is why discussions about veganism are so much more intense and so much more fraught with emotion than questions of how can we tolerate and include transgender people, how can we tolerate gambling, how can we tolerate drug addicts, because it's not about tolerance. Whichever decision you make, you are supporting one side or the other. So you've just totally polarized it into a you're either with us or you're against us. You either support it or you don't. It's, it's a very polarized outlook. It's a civil war that divides the whole world into two unequal halves. It's not a civil war. It's not a war. And if you're wanting to change the world, you shouldn't be looking at it as a war with you either on this side or, or that side and there's no third option 
there's no third option. That's it. You've just said it's either it's all or nothing. And this is what I think is basically going to be the undoing of the movement as it is today on the VYC. Either you are supporting the meat industry, the dairy industry, the egg industry, or you are refusing to support them. You're supporting vegan companies. You're supporting a vegan cause. How do how does this fit in with the the happy meat or the you know, ethical farming thing, like the either or? You know, like when you say the meat industry, I think you're evoking factory farming. There's a lot of people that are against factory farming and will try their best to purchase meat and goods that are not part of that. But you're just saying it's the either. Either or you either you know, you're on this side of the civil war or the other side. There's no third way. Um, I don't think that's a that's not going to be a successful strategy to change anything. There is no third way. This is an ethical dichotomy. And what we hear again and again from these people is the reassurance that they tolerate us, that they regard us as vegans, as yet another disadvantaged minority, as yet another group like transgender people, and they want to reassure us that they're very liberal and very pious and very concerned, and they'll accept us in their midst. They'll even maybe accept us having a district, the same way a lot of big cities have a gay district or something, that we can have our restaurants, we can have our little places and hangouts too. Um, and again, this isn't methodologically sophisticated, but that's misapprehending the nature of this conflict. And of course, it's not a conflict unless you make it a conflict. Why can you not try to find common ground and then work with others towards achieving that? Like, for instance, factory farming. There's a lot of people that are against um, factory farming in its current current way um, you could even go right to the other side and grab people like milk jar and sverage and stuff and find that common ground with them and work work towards maybe reducing suffering that way you know like if factory farming is the worst thing why not go for that and you probably find that most or well, a lot of people would be on board with that you know um, but this either or you either with us or you're against us. Uh, it's either, you know, there's there's no third way. That's uh, that's just setting up a conflict when maybe you should be looking for allies. Of course, their next step is to say, but you also have to tolerate us. You also have to, just as we're being accepting and liberal towards you, you also have to accept us, the meat eating majority, right? And if you ever want to work with the majority, to not even the majority, if you want to work with other people who are different from you, you have to tolerate them. Um, so I'm just assuming that there's no interest here in working with others with different viewpoints to yourself um, to find solutions for common goals, you know, like to, yeah, like th there's no interest in working with others to reduce animal suffering. That's always the next step of that argument. Mutual acceptance, mutual tolerance. Is that how either side could win or lose in the Syrian civil war? Either side. I think you need to look more into this, into the Syrian civil war if you think it's like either side. I think there's more than one side there. Is that what happened with ISIS? Not all political decisions and not all political movements can be comprehended under this pluralistic paradigm of the tolerant society trying to include mutually hostile and contradictory subcultures. Veganism is a subculture, but we don't want to be. And all of you watching this who eat meat and make excuses for it and pay the extra five bucks for ethically farmed meat, you have to ask yourself, what does it mean that you support this when you wouldn't pull the trigger yourself? And there you go again saying, like, you wouldn't pull the trigger yourself. It's just not something that is needed to be done for most people. It's like, 
I don't know much about you, but I doubt you've worked on farms. You might have, but most most people haven't. Most people haven't worked on farms because it's pretty shit work. It's fucking hard work. You don't get paid that well. Um, and people are doing other things, you know, like you live in a city. You've got another you've got another other things to do. Um, would you work on a farm uh, and like harvest crops, you probably would. Would most meat eaters in different situation be able to kill um, an animal that they were going to eat? I think that they would. In fact, I think almost all humans are easily capable of doing that in the right circumstances. Um, we're just brought up separated from our food and separated from nature so much that it's not something that we ever come across but you know like if you were brought up in a tribe that fucking hunted or if you're brought up on a farm where you you had your own chickens and you you had to kill the pig when they got old or whatever like you'd have done it when you're growing up and it would just be, be no yourself So like in conclusion, um, I think this video like really sums up for me um, as a outsider everything that is kind of wrong with the the vocal VYC attitude um, of all or nothing, you're either with us or against us, you're, it's um, zero meat, uh, zero everything, it's like, that's not a strategy that would work in reality because you have to work with people that don't completely agree with you on everything, but that you share common goals with if you actually want to make any kind of change in the world. And if anything, I think, um, if I was like a, a guy that owned a factory farm and fucking had loads of money in it and didn't give a shit, I'd be quite happy to see the the, the growth of this vegan outlook because I think if anything it works it, it works against bringing people together to to actually make real change in, in things like factory farming or uh, improve like animal rights or like have some kind of bill of rights for animals or like minimum minimum like treatment fucking rules or something because this sort of veganism is so um, exclusive and, and polarized that it puts people off really associating um, with any kind of animal rights sort of movement, you know, and people wouldn't feel welcome in it, you know, like um, people who want to improve improve welfare for animals wouldn't be welcome on a lot of these kind of animal rights marches or whatever because because they eat meat. So in conclusion, I think uh, this video, I've watched a lot of vegan YouTube over the last, over the last few years. Um, this particular video for me is the best and worst vegan video that's ever been made. It completely sums up everything that I think is wrong with um, the attitude that's kind of prevalent in the, in the VYC. It's an attitude is like a polarized um, us or them, no third way, no compromise um, attitude, which it basically it's exclusive and not inclusive. It's any kind of person that would would um, have an interest in animal rights or maybe would 
kind of like get behind a banner, like to to maybe like uh, I don't know, bring in a bill of rights for animals, or um, you know, like reform factory farming, uh, that kind of stuff. They're going to be put off completely by this kind of rhetoric, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of um, like the Black Lives Matter thing. It's um, from what I saw, there was basically like a growing, literally like organic um, resistance against the militarization of the police. Um, in America and you know there's a few like incidents that happened and people started like protesting about it and then what happened is um, Black Lives Matter kind of got the center stage they came and kind of co-opted the entire thing and, and turned it into like a us or them race kind of thing and that instantly put off anyone who was literally kind of just like against the, the kind of growing militarization of the police from wanting to associate with um, what now become like a Black Lives Matter racially charged polarized issue and and it went away you know um, I think it's a similar sort of thing here like you know if I was a captain of uh, industry in the fucking what do you call it the um, factory farming industry I'd be very happy um, to have all these vegans trying to completely polarize and sensationalize the issue because it puts people off, it divides, um, it's going to stop or prevent people coming together to find like a common ground which would in this case be like improving animal rights. Um, because nobody wants to associate with fanatics.